Well, more body cam footage released from the scene of the Murdoch murders. This is from the first deputy on scene that night. You can hear Alec telling him that he grabbed a gun, laid it against the truck, and he talks about the boating threat that he said Paul was receiving because of the boating accident. Well, for more on this, now I want to bring out a trial analyst, both Grant Varner and Kim Varner here, defense attorneys in Greenville County. So, gentlemen, thank you as always for joining us. Now, we saw some of this body camera footage for the first time today, but this was a pretty significant day as far as forensics, footage, everything. So I want to go and ask how we ended the day with Dick Harpulian saying that he has extensive cross-examination for the autopsy. As a defense attorney, what would that include? I listened to the pathologist testify, and, and it was absolutely brutal. Yeah. She was very matter of fact. I, I think they wanted to end on a stronger note because they're coming to a conclusion. But I think what Harpulian is going to do is they have a ballistics expert, I would assume, that's going to come by, and they want to narrow it down. Mm -hmm. And what they're trying to establish is would it be consistent with, or it is consistent with, two separate shooters. That's what they've hinted at all along. Something else, too, that, that was big today. We start off on an interesting note with oh. jurors testing positive for COVID. We have three alternates left. What happens if this thing really unravels and we have multiple jurors who test positive? You're looking at a strong potential for an automatic mistrial if jurors start dropping like flies. You know, and, and I don't know what the court would do if, say, one of the attorneys tested positive for COVID. Mm. The automatic answer normally would be, we're going to delay it. You know, we'll give it a few days. I know they're talking about retesting numerous people. I think all the jurors are going to get tested again on Wednesday. Yep. But, you know, I think it was Harpooli that made an interesting point. We've, we've been here three weeks. We've lost three jurors. You know, judge, we need to take a little pause, wait till Wednesday. And Creighton Waters joined in that, and Judge Newman decidedly saying, no, we're going to keep pressing forward. You know, we need to get this thing in the rearview mirror. Let's go. So. Okay. I'm, I'm hoping everyone stays healthy, but you got to remember these jurors sit this close to one another all day. Right. Everyone in that courtroom's in close proximity. I think it's definitely something to keep an eye on. It could change the course of this trial. Yeah, Wednesday could be very interesting. It could. Credit to you guys. Last week, you were asking about possible GPS from Alec Murdoch's truck. We we're hearing a lot of things coming out of the truck where you start stopping it and you were asking about GPS. Sounds like we may have that now. What did you think about what we may be getting from GM? On Thursday, I was really curious to hear whether that was gonna come out. SLED testified they did not have the GPS. Mm -hmm. Apparently GM, General Motors Corporation, reached out to the prosecution and say they have that evidence. That could be absolutely devastating and criti critical because that should show whether or not Alex went by the kennels, whether his car went by where the phone was allegedly thrown out or even up that road. It'll also tell you what time the car started moving and the direction it traveled. Mm. That could totally blow the prosecution's case out or create monumental problems for the defense. That is a critical piece that should be coming up tomorrow and I'm very, very interested to hear what it is. Grant, what was your reaction when you heard that that may be coming out? Well, we've been wondering where that evidence is for a while. Now we're going to get to hear it. Yeah. He's absolutely right. This could be a windfall for the defense, or it could unwind everything Alec Murdoch has said to this point. I mean, it could really stick a pin in this case and seal it for the jury one way or the other. Wow. Okay. Something else with, the, with this body cam footage, too, that, that was interesting today. Why the timing of bringing this out now? Because, you know, as, as attorneys here, for the uh, average person, we don't know the strategy for attorneys. So why bring this body camera footage out now when so early on we saw so much of it? I think they wanted to show from a objective perspective. Mm -hmm. And as they're winding down, it is becoming more what a jury wants to hear. It's the testimony about the bullet wounds, these kind of things which we expect. And that is a very personal touch. The body cam is right there. Right. And it shows a different perspective. The backside to that is Sled had testified they did, I think, 75 strips on his shirt and found no blood. Mm -hmm. And I'm real interested to know, is that the same shirt that their other experts had had blood splatter? Because you would test where you saw sure. the blood. So I think it gives it a personal touch because it is really one-on-one -on -one with the body cam. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think they want to, for lack of a better term, they're getting ready to close down, they want to bring it home. Grant, what do you expect from the prosecution these final two days here, if they do plan to finish on Wednesday? Well, in a dramatic turn of events, we're going to have the, the GPS, you know, yep. information. Definitively, that's coming in. If they can get the records custodian tomorrow, it'll, we'll hear it tomorrow or we'll hear it Wednesday. Um, 
I think you're going to see what we've seen today and Friday and part on Thursday. All the key points that everyone wants to know, you know, mm -hmm. not the financial crimes and all that. That's that's just an aside to try to show motive, which they don't have to prove anyway. Right. What they're getting to now are this was grisly. It was brutal. It was up close. And this is how we're linking Alec Murdoch to these crimes. This is how we're going to try to put the murder weapon in his hands and connect the dots to the bodies of Paul and Maggie. Okay. Yes and no real quick from both of you. There have been reports and rumors that Alec may take the stand. Would you have Alec take the stand if you were his attorney? At this stage, no. But I don't think that decision is going to ultimately be, be made mm -hmm. until after they finish the defense case because putting a defendant on the stand is a very risky move. Even though he's a lawyer, lawyers are notorious for being terrible witnesses. You've already seen one lawyer testify. No. Uh, it's a risky move, and I don't think that decision's been made. At this stage, no, I would not be inclined to do it. Great. I, I think everybody watching today saw how emotional Alec Murdoch was today. His body was in constant motion. His face was flushed most of the day, particularly during the DNA right. and, and the, the autopsy discussion. I would not put him on the stand with what knowledge I have of this case at the moment. It could change tomorrow, it could change Wednesday, but today, no. Okay, Grant Varner, Kim Varner, thank you so much for joining us. Tori.